Hey guys <clears throat> and gals, maybe mostly gals. Welcome to my Facebook Live. It's time for Make It Monday. I'm super excited. Um, I have been in my craft room all weekend preparing for all sorts of stuff that I have coming and I have some really cute cards designed for tonight. I have four of them. I hope that we have time for four of them. Hi Kay, hi Bernetta, hi Missy, welcome. Thanks for watching tonight. There was just something about the gloomy overcast day today that had me thinking tonight is the perfect night for stamping. Hi Marsha, welcome. I see a lot of you just popping on. As you come on, I love when you tell me hello, like all of you have been. It's super fun for you to post um, where you're from because one of my favorite things to do after a live is to go back through all my comments and, and read where everyone is from. So I think that's super cool. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Patty. Hi, Marsha. Hi, Robin. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining tonight. <laughs> I see that Marsha shared the video already. Thank you so much for doing that, Marsha. And Kay shared, thank you. Hi, Julie, welcome. Sharon shared, thank you so much, you guys. I really love it when you share my video because that really helps to support my small business. And I so, so, so appreciate your support. When you hit that share button, it might be on this side, um, it just, it gets my video on your wall and your friends get to see and I get to share creativity with everyone who sees it and that makes my heart happy. So I so appreciate that. Hi, Gloria from Swamico. You're not too far away. Um, for those of you who are new um, or forget where I'm from, I'm from New Holstein, Wisconsin. My name is Rose Grunewald. I'm an independent demonstrator for Stampin' Up! I've been doing this for a few years now and I have found that stamping is an amazing, super fun part of my life and I love to share it with you. Oh my goodness, we've got Christianburg, Virginia. Sharon is from, welcome. Hi Jody. glad to see you. Julie, thanks for sharing. Hi Arliss. Arliss is from Nielsville and I know that area of Wisconsin well. We hunt in that area and I just love it there. I love all the beautiful oak trees in the area. It's like, reminds me of home. So welcome everyone. <clears throat> I have four projects tonight and I really hope that we can get to all four. Uh, so I think that I shouldn't be chatty too much tonight because I got a lot of stamping to get through. The one thing I do want to remind you all is that tomorrow is the last day for you to pre-order my Dragonfly Garden class to go. So you have until tomorrow, but I'm putting those orders in for all your stuff on the 20th. So you cannot delay. If you want the um, a Dragonfly Cla Garden class to go delivered right to your mailbox, you have until tomorrow to do that. You'll get to make six designs, two of each card. So that class contains all the stuff to make 12 cards. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. And you have a few different options. I'll post the link when I'm done. I just wanted to remind you of that before we get to stamping. And I have prizes. I think we should do prizes. What do you think? I think prizes is probably everybody's favorite part. So let me turn this camera around. You might remember, so I'm giving away three prizes tonight because my prize bin is getting full, like overflowing. I know that's not a bad problem to have. Remember last week we made all these adorable donkeys? That darling donkey stamp set is free and I made this spinner card. You see how he spins around like that? I'm giving away this cute spinner card for the likes from last week. And our winner for that is Lorraine Padden. Congratulations, Lorraine. I'm going to send this adorable little donkey card in the mail to you. And you will get to see up and close and personal how fun it is to have him spin around. 
I also have two card kits, one for comments and one for shares. So this first one is using the same stamp set that I am featuring tonight called A Touch of Ink, and it's using that same ombre paper. Now I've left this card kit, I've mentioned it before in my lives, pretty simple, but you can feel free to dress it up however you like. There is enough supplies in here to make four cards in different colors here. And it goes pretty easy. If you don't have this stamp set, you can just swap out one of your favorites from your shelf. And the winner of this is Debbie Black. Debbie, I need your address. So if you could shoot me a private message or an email at countrycardsbyrose at gmail.com, I'll get this in the mail to you. And then the next is for sharing. And I've got this, um, a card kit to make all four of these beautiful cards. Um, I made these in my catalog kickoff. These are just absolutely stunning. You'll get um, everything you need to make all four of those for sharing. Thanks for sharing. And the winner of that is Jean Schutt. So congratulations, Jean. I do have your address already, so I will get that out in the mail to you. Okay. Tonight, we are going to play with the Flower and Field Designer Series paper. Um, I took some time and made this sampler so that you could easily see all of the pretty designs here and the colors that go with it. And I popped some up on dimensionals that really make those colors pop. But there are so many colors that coordinate with this designer series paper. I better move my uh, water or I will spill it everywhere. So you get... Um, it's a 12 by 12 pack, um, all these designs, front and back. So the front and backs coordinate really, really well with each other. And I have a virtual party going on right now with my friend Trista. She is the hostess. And the other night, I was showing some simple stamping, and I made this beautiful set of thank you cards. Trista is a Color Street representative, and so she can use these thank you cards in her business. And all of these were made using the flower and field coordinating colors or coordinating papers. Isn't that beautiful? I love this one. So I just wanted to show you some really, really simple cards that you could make using this pretty, pretty paper. And of course, we're gonna make some tonight. What do you think? Now the flower and field, I'm gonna just close this up here. The flower and field, um, oops. Flower and field designer series paper is one of our free celebration items. It is free with a $50 purchase. Yep, it's a level one free with a $50 purchase. So if you buy that Dragonfly class to go and you choose option one, you're going to get to choose a free level one celebration item. And this could be one that you add on. And if it is, I'm going to give you lots and lots of ideas for it tonight. All right. Should we start our first card? What do you think? I think yes. All right. I am... Uh oh I lost a die. I'm pick it up here. Okay, so for this card, I'm using, these are like my go-tos. I use these all the time. Stitched So Sweetly dies. If you don't have these, get them, because I'm always using them. They're like, they're stitched, but also have a scalloped edge, and these unique shapes, here's the other one that comes in it are also stitched around the outside and they're perfect for something just a little bit more exciting than like a circle punch or something like that. <clears throat> and we are also going to use the free celebration stamp set called A Touch of Ink. Oh, Kim, I made the sampler. Do you mean, Kim's asking, where can we get the sampler? Do you mean this sampler? 
I made this. I just cut all the designer series paper so that I could show it on camera and you could see all the colors that go with it. Um, hi, Kim. Welcome. <clears throat> okay, so this touch of ink stamp set is one of our level two items and that is free with a $100 purchase. It's one of my favorite stamp sets and um, one of our cards, actually, I used this as my inspiration, but I changed it up just a little bit. You can see all the beautiful things that you can do with this stamp set. This is a two-step stamp set, so you're going to get to see that in action. It's got some pretty hummingbirds, some leaves, some flowers. I love, love, love the font on these sentiments. So I need this pretty stitched um, a frame cut out. So I'm bringing in my baby boss here. This cute little thing fits right on my desk. It's like smaller than my purse, believe it or not. Oh my gosh, Kim, Heal Your Heart is also one of my favorites. I haven't played with it yet for making projects for my live because I was a little afraid if I did that I wouldn't use anything else in the catalog. <laughs> and I wanted you guys to see all sorts of samples. But the font in that set is absolutely gorgeous too. All right, I'm running this through my little baby boss. Isn't this so cute? This thing, I love it. I'm not kidding when I say it's smaller than my purse. It probably weighs less too. <laughs> okay. And let me move some of my stuff out of the way here. Okay, so we've got our die cut piece here. You can see how that is stitched around the edge. Gloria says everything is smaller than my purse. So funny story, my mom used to have a really big purse and her old boss used to call it her Samsonite. <laughs> like Samsonite luggage and I just thought that was like the funniest thing she would leave to go to lunch and her boss would say did you grab your Samsonite <laughs> so Gloria is your purse bigger than as big as a Samsonite I don't know but yes it was big and that was so funny to me okay we're using a piece of misty moonlight for our card base this is five and a half by eight and a half and I folded it in half so our finished card size is five and a half by four and a quarter. It's just a quarter sheet of card stock. Remember when we were kids and we used to make homemade cards and you would fold your card in fourths? That is exactly the size of the cards that we're making here. All right, and I've got a piece of this beautiful designer series paper from Flower and Field. And this is five and a quarter by four. And we, oh, I'm sorry, it is five and a half by four and a quarter. It is exactly the same size as our card base. I forgot that I didn't leave that extra border. So I'm just going to glue this down right away. So we're going to let this pretty, oh, do you hear those angels singing when I used my seal? Oh, I could hear them. So amazing. Um, but I'm going to let this designer series paper take over my entire card front. And actually, I'm going to show you where I got the inspiration for this card. Whenever I start to make a card, I always go through and I look and I think, what are they doing with this paper in the catalog? But before I got to this paper, this card right here totally caught my eye. So we're going to do just some simple stamping um, with a design like this that inspired me. Bernetta says, wouldn't take much to weigh less than my purse. But you know what, Bernetta, that just means we get a good workout everywhere we go, right? That's what those big purses do for us. So this um, designer series paper is the same size as the entire card front. Okay. And I'm gonna soften this by putting some vellum here. So 
I don't want my glue to stick through. So this is gonna be centered. What I'm gonna do is actually grab it and flip it over so I know exactly where to put my glue to glue down this vellum. There we go. Okay, and I am going to, it does not really matter if it's perfectly centered. It's kind of fun if it isn't. Like that. And I'm gonna grab, I'm so, so, so happy that Stampin' Up! brought back our White Baker's Twine. It comes in a combo pack with this pretty blushing bride color um, as part of the snail mail suite. And I'm gonna use the white here. You know me, I gotta have some ribbon on my card. So, let's see here. I'm gonna wrap this around my card front and tie it in a bow. Now these glue lines are helping me to know where this is going to be on my vellum. So I'm gonna tie this in a bow just outside of my die cut layer. Arnetta says, wouldn't it be nice if the weight was from having too much money in it? I like how you think. You know, sometimes I go places and I go to take stuff out of my purse and out comes like a seal <laughs> or a stamp set, something I just threw in there. Um, because I was traveling somewhere and, and was going to do some stamping while I was there, and then I forget to take it out. I'm so curious. Has anyone put stamp sets in their purse? Or it'd be super fun if you tell me, what is the weirdest thing in your purse right now? Let's do some stamping, huh? What do you think? All right. I think I would like to stamp this pretty butterfly. So, grab my <clears throat> block. And you know, I have a little fun fact for you because um, I have a degree in biology and in my senior year, I took an entomology class. And we learned, entomology is the study of insects. And I learned all about the Carner Blue Butterfly because my professor, was a specialist in Carner Blue Butterfly. So, um, what's interesting is the Carner Blue is endangered. So endangered that they won't even tell you where their habitat is because they do not want butterfly like collectors going there and finding them for their um, samples for their insect collections. So the butterfly we're going to make today is blue, like the Carner Blue. Isn't that an interesting little tidbit for you? Patty says, I, you know what, Patty, I think you're right. I think I probably don't want to know the weirdest thing in your purse. You're always a hoot, Patty. You always crack me up. Okay, now I gotta find my blue, my misty moonlight. We're gonna make a little Carner Blue butterfly here. So this is a two-step stamp. So now we're coming in with the wings and I don't want this to be full, full strength. So I'm just going to stamp off before I stamp it here onto my little butterfly. Pretty, huh? Isn't that gorgeous? And we need a sentiment, I feel like. So, let's see. What should we do? Best wishes, I think. Hello, friend. I think that would be super fun. That way we can use it for whatever we want to. Let me grab my smaller block. The weirdest thing in my purse is biofreeze. <laughs> Oh, yes. That way we can have it wherever, right? 
when that, that back pain hits. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah says she loves this card. Thank you. And thank you, Sharon. Our little cute Kerner blue. And I'm going to pop this up on some dimensionals. Tuck it right here. What do you think? How's that going to look? I think pretty nice. Let's grab my dimensionals. And you can see I've been avoiding my edges. My friend Jody encourages me to use my edges because it's so rewarding to throw away a nice clean sheet from our dimensionals. And it's not like I'm opposed to using all the edges. It's just, I don't know, there's something about it that I prefer to use those nice, pretty hexagons. All right. And so here we've got our card front. Thank you, Jody. Thanks, Kim. I think though that we should also stamp the inside. So let's get our butterfly. And let's put him mm, I think right here. And we'll grab our blue again, our misty moonlight. I will stamp off. I just love these two-step stamps, and I love how they are not like perfectly lined up um, in this particular stamp set. It looks like a whimsical watercolor to me. I just love that style. Hi, Jessica. Welcome. Thank you, Marsha. <laughs> I know Jody says it's free dimensional. You're so right. I think for my next cards, I should use the edges. What do you guys think? Force myself to cut those edges and use them. Oh, I hear the angels again. It's so beautiful. Such a smooth glue. I love that stamp and seal. It's like my favorite thing Stampin' Up! came out with besides their stamps and their pretty coordinating paper and their gorgeous designer series paper and the adorable little baby boss. So many cute things. Okay, there, I'm just straightening out that. How about some bling? What do you think, should we put some bling on here? I think it needs some bling. <clears throat> hmm. Ooh, these opals would be pretty. I mean, these black would be interesting because that would certainly match the black of our card. Any votes? I got rhinestones here. I feel like the black would be pretty, but you know, butterflies are super sparkly and gorgeous and wonderful. What do we think? I better get my... All right, let's try the black. Let's put one here and I will put one, whoops, up here and I will put one down here. When I place my bling, my extra embellishments, I really like to follow the flow of the card. So um, I actually could probably put like one more here and one more here because I feel like the flow of this card is going this way. And it just kind of helps your eye follow the flow of the card. So matte black dots. Ooh, Wink of Stella, I love that. Let's bling up this butterfly with our Wink of Stella. I'm gonna put some of this on the butterfly wings and get some sparkly going here. You know, I think there's one more thing that we should do on this card. I haven't done this in a while. Oh, let's see. Anyone guess what I'm gonna do? Oh. 
Oh man, I got a new desk chair and it doesn't roll very good. I'm waiting for a new mat to come in so that it can roll because I've got carpet up here. These rolly chairs. I'm gonna do some ink splatters. I'm going to use my Misty Moonlight, make sure all my other projects are out of the way. And I'm gonna take the fat end of this marker and I'm just going to splatter the ink right across the front. Easy peasy. Adds a little whimsical look to it. And I'm going to be really careful because it's going to take a little bit for those ink splatters to dry on my vellum. But I would say that's the perfect finishing touch. Can you see the sparkles in that? Oh, there, that light does it pretty good. The shimmery in the butterfly wings with that wink of Stella. Good idea, Jody. Love it. Isn't that gorgeous? That's our first card. How simple and pretty is this? Okay, and you know, I didn't straighten up that vellum. You could be a little bit more perfect on that, like perfectly straight if you wanted, and it would look gorgeous. Okay, let's do some cleanup. Because I got more cards coming. Are we ready for another project? What do you think? Oh, I gotta think about. Yep, I'm not using these stamps for the next one. <clears throat> Put these back. How do you like our butterfly card? Oh, thank you guys so much. Everyone's saying they love it. It's a great card. Simple, right? You guys can do this. You can make that at home, and oh, how much would everyone love to get that card? Okay, <clears throat> ink, my glue. I've got like my system for how I like stuff because I gotta be able to find it when I'm done. All right. There's our first card. Next card. Bringing out our punch. I think we haven't used um, any yellow tones in quite some time. So this one, I also found inspiration here in the catalog and our card's gonna look pretty darn similar to this card. A little different, um, but it's going to look similar. Okay, what I've got here is a piece of So Saffron card base. This is five and a half by eight and a half. This is just a half a sheet of cardstock. And I am going to furnish that edge to get a nice, great fold on our cardstock. I've got a scrap here for punching. And then a piece of Whisper White for the inside and a couple layers for the front. Should we just stamp our inside right away? I think that would be a good idea. Oh geez, I just knocked my blocks everywhere. This is what happens when I don't put them back exactly where I want them. Okay, let's get out some of these flowers. Okay, I'm mounting the flower, the detail from the flower on my block. This is um, I actually get asked this quite a bit after my lives, believe it or not. Um, this is a size D stamp block. Um, okay, catching up on comments here. Bernetta asked, does it wreck the marker doing the ink splatters? Okay, Bernetta, that is a great question. And um, I get asked that a lot. It does not wreck the marker, like Jody said here, unless you do it a lot. Now, Jody likes to clean off her barrel in the cap, and I don't always do that. So you are going to, if it's a really juicy marker, you may have some ink that collects in the barrel of the marker. To be honest with you, Bernetta, the most that I use those markers for is coloring on stamps, which doesn't use a whole lot of ink. I'm not usually using them to like color on my paper. So I'm a little okay if 
um, the ink is used quite a bit in the splatters, but I also will tell you that I ordered, it was 2015 when I ordered those markers and I've never had to replace them. So that gives you kind of an idea. And to be honest, I do splatter usually quite a bit. I'm surprised I haven't been doing it as much in these lives. All right, I'm going to stamp this beautiful flower onto our layer for the inside. Great, great, great question. And turn it a little bit to stamp it here in the corner. I'll even come up here and do just a little bit. And I think that looks good. Ooh, that was close. I almost put it right in the memento. Okay. And I've got some so saffron here. I'll take the second part of this two-step stamp. Yes, they last a long time. I use my blends a lot more than I use those other markers. Um, definitely to color our stamp sets, I would always use blends versus those markers. Um, and you can do the splatters with the blends too. I would not recommend doing it in the cap though on the blends. I would recommend, because um, there's another way you can do ink splatters. And you know what I'll do is I will show you on this card right here, quick. Um, I'm going to grab our bumblebee marker. And another way that I have um, seen that you can splatter is to take another ink or like your bone folder and you can just, this works a little bit better with your blends, but you can kind of hit, and this works with Wink Estella too, you can kind of splash your marker like that. This works better if you have a real juicy marker, but I mean, you aren't doing this very hard. This is a very light flicking. Um, let's see here. Do I have a? Let's see how our blends. Let's see if I can get my blends. Oh yeah, the blends definitely splatter this way, and then you're not going to have to ruin the ink tip. So just a few more tips. Um, Bernetta, the name is Many Marvelous Markers. Okay, so I stamped the inside. What I did was I just stamped that flower in the black for the detail, and then I took the two-step and uh, stamped the so saffron around those flowers. And I am going to adhere this to the inside of our card base. Robin, I think that you were afraid that I ran out of glue before, and trust me, I have not run out of glue. Oops, I must have had some blue ink splatters. I just got it on the inside of my card. So that's the other thing um, to forewarn you about, is to clean your surface before stamping your next card to make sure you don't get ink splatters everywhere because I just got a little blue on the inside. That's okay, it's a handmade card. Nobody expects perfection, right? Patty says a long time ago there was a tool to do the splatter. Oh, that would be so cool. <laughs> okay, so the inside of our card is done. Isn't that beautiful just the way it is on the inside? Love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, okay, now we have got a piece of um, the Flower and Field Designer Series paper. Sorry, I'm moving my sample card so I can see it and remember how I did it. <clears throat> and this piece has these cute polka dots. The dark yellow here is bumblebee and the light is so saffron. And this is five and a quarter by four. And we're just gonna glue this down onto our card front. 
whoops. If your seal roller ever gets stuck, you just move it along. <laughs> Okay, gluing this down. That's pretty simple, huh? All right, now for some stamping. We're going to do our outside of our card actually pretty darn similar to the inside. I'm going to take my memento and going to stamp these flowers in here. I think I want this to kind of look like a nice bunch of flowers. I'm just going to fill in like that. And we're going to get our two step, our second step. We're going to do it just like our inside. Stamp that so saffron over the flowers. And again, this is not perfection. You can see it's a little bit whimsical. I tend to kind of like that look. There we go. And now we've got a hummingbird to stamp. So let me grab my next block. Our hummingbird is drinking the nectar of our flowers. So let's stamp that. You know, the first time I used this stamp set, was actually right after, this is kind of a sad story, but it was therapeutic to me. It was right after my grandma passed away. I just needed something to keep my mind off of it um, in the end of December. I had just gotten the stamp set and my grandma always loved hummingbirds. And so I just sat and I played and I made all sorts of cards using the hummingbird and it just, Father well, Grandma was with me, and so this stamp set holds a special place in my heart. I always think of my grandma when I'm using it. Okay, now the hummingbird body and wings, they're part of a two-step. Bonnie says, I did not get to watch you live tonight, but I'm watching now. Well, I'm live still now, Bonnie, so welcome. Thanks for watching. I so love connecting with all of you. I have so much fun in these lives. All right, I'm using Coastal Cabana and I'm stamping off so I can soften that color and just get a very light shade of Coastal Cabana over that hummingbird. Isn't that beautiful? Those hummingbirds are so bright and colorful. I absolutely love them. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to grab some ribbon. I want to bring out the black that's in the borders here of this hummingbird. So I'm going to use my black organdy ribbon, and I love this stuff because you can see through it to your project. All right. Cut that off. And then I like to use some tape. So I'm just going to line this up here near the bottom of my layer. And fold that around. I'll just use some tape and secure it like this. You also could probably use your Seal Plus. I just find tapes a bit easier to grab. <clears throat> I love that ribbon, since Sharon. Me too. You also love the lives. Oh, thank you so much. That totally makes my day. 
All right, now I'm going to take my white. I'm going to use this stuff a lot, you guys. Fair warning. It's such a great neutral color, and I think white is a wonderful accent piece to kind of make some of these projects really pop. Just that bright white adds a nice pop of, of bright against some of our colors. Okay, and I'm going, you know what? I want to wrap this twice, so I'm going to save this piece. Let's do this again. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this twice so I get a little bit more white. So I'm holding down my end and I wrap around, I wrap again, and I want to tie this on the same side that the first one came around. So when I bring this ribbon around, I'm bringing it to the top side of the layer that's down there. I'm explaining all of this stuff because it took me a bit to figure some of these things out, and I hope that you find it helpful. Some of these tips about placing embellishments and and tying some of these ribbons or twine. Um, and these thin twines, it's really hard to get a good um, ribbon sometimes as you're, or a good bow as you're trying to hold it down and tie things. So these thin ones, I like to tie in a knot first. Um, and then when it's tied in a knot first, I don't need someone to hold their finger there because John is not gonna come up here and do it for me every time I need him to. He's just not that kind of husband. <laughs> All right, then I'm just trimming off the ends. I like to squeeze those layers together. So you see, I'm gonna try and bring this close. Hopefully you can see that. We've got that double twine wrapped around. All right, and now this is going to go on our card front, like so, and I'm gonna glue it because I have learned the hard way lately that if I put too much stuff on dimensionals, it is hard to go through the darn mail. And I love dimensionals, so that makes me sad. But, okay, glue this down. And listen, I'm not trying to make sure that it's perfectly centered or anything like that. I'm just gluing it. It lines up because it runs the length of the card. And we need our sentiment on here. So I'm going to use my tailored tag punch. Yes, I love to use ribbon with twine or I like kind of the wider ribbon with a thinner twine over the top. And I think that this would be wonderful if I used Thinking of You. Sounds like a fun sentiment to use here. Good one for this design. Oh, and there's one more thing we need to add to our card that I didn't do. Thinking of You. So I'm going to stamp this in the center. And um, in our stamp set, there's these little tiny dots like this. Um, and I am going to mount those on a little block. Uh, what I'm going to do, oh, here we go. Grab my sew saffron. Gonna stamp off and then, oh, nope, I'm not gonna stamp off because it's a little too light. Just kind of stamp that across that tag and it adds just a little splash. Hi, Kelly, welcome. Thank you, Kay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that, you guys. You are so kind. I just tell John, I just love Stampin' Live because. Everyone watching is just so complimentary and kind. You're all so nice. Thank you. You always make my day. <clears throat> all right, and we're just going to stick this on here. 
like so. There we go, our card's finished. Isn't that beautiful and springy and wonderful and amazing? And our inside, love it. Now, this is the first card I made. Of course, I put a little bling on here. We could put some bling on our card. Um, and I also stamped those little dots in Smoky Slate near the bird and the flowers. So that would definitely add a little something. Let's put some bling on here. I think this time around, I wanna use my opal rounds because these are so darn pretty. Oops. Okay, and I'm following the flow. The card kind of is going here. So I'm gonna stick one here. And I will put one here. I think up here, right on the border. Isn't that beautiful? Love it. Oh, Kim's going to try to make these tomorrow. She has off. That sounds like a worthy project, Kim. I love it. So what do you think of our second card? That one is done. Our next card, we're really doing some simple stamping, but you are going to be shocked. I mean, absolutely shocked how pretty it turns out. I promise you. All right, let's do some cleanup. Get some of this stuff out of the way before we move on to our next project. All right, so putting my hummingbird away, putting my thinking of you away. Keeping my flower out. Um, these dots I think I'll keep out too. Okay. So our next card. We got some really easy layers here. I've got a piece of Sahara sand. This is five and a half by eight and a half. Can you guys believe I still have another card after this yet? Oh my gosh. Can you handle it? I'm not losing you guys yet, am I? All right. And then I have a piece of basic black. This is three and three quarters by five and a piece of Highland Heather, and this is three and a half by four and three quarters. We've got a piece for our inside, and this is um, four by five and a quarter. And I'll stamp that later. Okay. We're going to do a little border stamping here, and I'm just going to show you how easy it is to make a beautiful card with just stamps, ink, and paper. And our last one was like that, too. This is a quick card you're going to be able to whip up in no time. So I'm using my Memento Black ink, and I'm just going to stamp these flowers all or over kind of around the border here of our card front layer. So I'm really trying not to get this stem on here. I just want these flowers. Stamping all around. Just tucking those flowers in there. And we can change the angle of our flowers, like so. And we 
we can have some coming down like that and coming across like so. Okay, there's really no rhyme or reason to this. Just wherever we find that these fit. Ironically, this almost looks a little bit like a heart, doesn't it? <clears throat> okay, now I'm gonna find my, oh, here it is, Highland Heather ink pad. We're gonna do a little tone on tone stamping. So, just like we did on our other cards, we're gonna line this up. Oh, here we go. And stamp. And line this up and stamp. So we're stamping over where we stamped our black images. And you can kind of tell on the stamp set where you need to kind of line these up. It's pretty easy to tell. And of course, you get a little extra whimsical look. Isn't that beautiful? It really just adds a lot of rich color and dimension here. Uh, let's see, here we go. Sometimes it's hard for me to remember what way I turned these. Yeah. Pretty. I love it. Carol says, turning in late. I need to catch up later. No problem. Kim saw the heart too. I know right away I thought, ooh, that looks like a heart. Okay, now we've got these little dots. And I don't know if I want to come in. Let me see. Yeah, I think I can. I'm just gonna come in and stamp some of these dots around these flowers. Bring a little more of that black kind of interest in here. Like so. And we need a sentiment. I'm thinking right in the center, huh? So I like this one that says, thank you so much. So I'm gonna mount that here. I'm gonna practice. Actually, that's pretty darn straight. Oh, love it. Thank you so much, it says. And, um, whoops, better close this. Now we're going to start assembling our card and doing all the fun stuff. So let's, well, the stamping is really a lot of the fun stuff. Who am I kidding? I'm gonna mount this on my black piece. And when I do that, look at how much that layer just pops. You find that accent color and you mount that on there and it just changes the whole look of the card. Ooh, Kay says a little Wink of Stella. Well, I can't turn down a request for Wink of Stella. So I'll go in here. And let me just do this on the flowers. We'll see how that looks. I love that idea. Wink Costella adds a beautiful, beautiful touch. I love that suggestion. So I'm just doing it on all my flower petals. And it sure adds a little bling. Can you see that? Let's see if I can get it to, ooh, I can. I got it to shimmering here. Do you love that? 
All right, now, you know, my go-to friends, I love my black organdy, and we've got some black here that's really gonna help make that black pop. So I'm always thinking about those coordinating colors. What's that accent color and how am I gonna get that to really pop? So line this up. I wanna make sure it's straight. And then I flip it over and I'm gonna tape it down. So what are you doing after the live? Are any of you gonna go watch your DVR The Bachelor? I'm DVRing The Bachelor right now. And as soon as I'm done, I'm gonna go watch that show. There's gonna be so much drama tonight. It'll be the most dramatic rose ceremony yet. And I'm so excited. Okay, I'm looking for my linen thread. All right, now we are mounting this on a neutral piece of cardstock. So I wanna bring that neutral color, see? I wanna bring that neutral color into my card front too. So we're going to do very similar to like we did on our other card. This is kind of a go-to for me is to layer, you know, twine on top of ribbon. Do you guys have go-to card making moves or crafting um, styles that you like to do? I kind of have a go-to. This is a little bit of my, I like to layer these ribbons on top of each other. All right, I have Wink Estella on my fingers. <laughs> They're fabulous. Okay, and I'm gonna tie this in a knot and then tie it in a bow. Jody's gonna stamp when this is done. I should stamp while I watch The Bachelor. It's kind of my guilty pleasure each week. What's really funny is John will always be like, oh, I don't know how you can watch all that drama. But like 15 minutes in, he's asking me all sorts of questions. Okay, I didn't tie that very good, so we're gonna redo it. He's asking me all sorts of questions about what's going on on the show. So I think he kind of likes the drama. Or maybe he just likes to participate in the show with his wife, right? Maybe that's why he's watching it. Because I watch it and he loves me. All right, now, I'm gonna share another tip with you. This bow is not quite staying exactly where I want it to stay. So let me share my magical tip. I've got some glue dots here and, oh, I've got hair stuck to me. I am a shatter, so I have hair everywhere. Okay, I like to take a little glue dot and tuck it behind the knot of the bow. I have a glue dot stuck to my finger right now too. And then I stick the knot of the bow down exactly where I want it and that glue dot will help it to stay in just the perfect place. Do you love that? So that's a pretty simple tip. And now we're gonna mount this onto our card front. Where did my, here we go. Okay, are you watching Jody? Look at me, I'm using the dimensionals edge. I'm using it before I have to because when I use it when I have to, I feel like I'm forced against my will into doing this and I don't like that. So, doing it now, by choice. <laughs> Ooh, that got a little close to the edge. There's so much dimensional on here, it's fabulous. Ooh, Kelly, are you stamping now or are you stamping when we're done? Okay, and we are gonna put this on this neutral card base and you are gonna watch these colors pop and come to life. And I can't even describe 
how beautiful this looks in person, especially with that wink of Stella. Um, and we got to stamp the inside of our card, friends. So let's come in here and do a little similar to what we did on the front. I'm telling you, this is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful card. Not that you don't believe me, but there's something about some of these cards that these videos and pictures online, they just do not do them justice. So I don't know if any of you um, who have won prizes maybe have noticed that um, when you get those in the mail, it's like, oh my gosh, it didn't look that pretty on the camera. I think that these cards look so much better than the pictures ever come out online. I'm so grateful for the online platform to get to share the inspiration with all of you though. All right. So sticking the inside layer here, bringing that Highland Heather right through to the inside. And our card's finished. Isn't that simple, but so beautiful? Oh my gosh, this card pops. I'm telling you, it pops. Now, I wanna show you something. Let me move some of the stuff out of the way. We got one more card to make, so don't go running away yet. Okay, check out this. I made the same card in Gorgeous Grape. And Coastal Cabana. Isn't that one beautiful? And I think this one is my favorite, although Highland Heathers may be taking over the lead. Flirty Flamingo. These beautiful bright colors are the perfect palette for these. And this one's upside down. <laughs> Whoops. Aren't these absolutely gorgeous? Oh my gosh, they're so beautiful. And they were so easy. Just stamps, ink, paper, and a little ribbon. And if you didn't have that ribbon and you just had stamps, ink, and paper, oh, that Stella really dresses it up too. So there is a simple, simple, you can make hundreds of these and people would be absolutely wowed when they get these in the mail. All right, guys, do we have time for one more card? This next card. Not quite as simple. We got some embossing on it. Okay. I'm going to move my things out of the way. Um, I actually have not made this card in these colors yet. So you're going to learn right alongside me. I've got a basic black card base. Um, I have an idea of what I want to do here because I've got a sample card that I'll show you when I'm done. But I think I want to um, try something new. So we've got a basic black card base and we'll have a basic black layer. I'm using a piece of the designer series paper from Flower and Field. This is the design I'm using and these flowers look painted. So I'm going to my painted texture 3D embossing folder for this black layer. Now this layer here is, um, let me think, four by five and a quarter. I need my big boss for this one. So we'll see how this comes out because I haven't actually made this yet. I'm dropping everything. OK, 
Okay. I'm following my instructions here. I need one. I need my, this tells me to use four, but I'm telling you, I don't think it works that well that way. We'll find out. I'm sticking my paper in here. I'm putting that down. Yep, I do need four. <laughs> and then I need number four. Over the top. Okay. Oh, you always want to put the hinge in first so that it doesn't put undue pressure on that hinge. And then I'm going to roll it through. Super smooth, way smoother than the big shot that I had before. I always am afraid that when I open it up, it isn't going to work because it's so smooth. Okay. I know, I need to Stella more. I always forget about it, to be honest with you. Okay. Ooh, that is pretty. I'm gonna put this embossing paper away so don't lose it. Look at how pretty that is. It looks like paint smeared on walls. Okay, and this is gonna go onto our basic black piece like this. So let me glue her down. Uh, because this is an embossed layer, I'm going to go all the way around, not just my four corners like I usually do. And I'll do a little line here in the middle just to make sure she stays good. Okay, center this up. There we go. This is really pretty. So can you see that texture? I think I have a good angle with the light. Feels really awesome. Okay, so here we've got our card base. All right, now I'm gonna give you a little tip because we're doing some fussy cutting. I've just got a scrap and I know that I want these big flowers in here. So what I did was I cut this out. I kind of lined up these big flowers and decided where I'd like to start cutting. And I started cutting here because I'm gonna want this to kind of go like bigger and then small. So I already started fussy cutting just a little bit. And it really can use some more detail here. I don't know about you, but I find fussy cutting to be a little bit therapeutic for me. There's something really relaxing about it. And actually, what I'm gonna do before I fussy cut is get this extra piece out of the way. So first I'm going to go around these. And just kind of get this extra big piece out of the way. Well, this is a nice corner too. You could cut like this and that would look awesome. But I'm going to come in here and start cutting this with a little bit more detail and following the lines of these painted flowers. I want to keep that black background in there. Mm, I don't think I want that green leaf though, so I'm going to go around that. And I don't know that I want this little blue flower, so I'm going to go around that. 
And once we get this fussy cut, we'll line this up and see exactly where we need to trim. All right. So I think this will come in like this. All right, I'm gonna fussy cut here. Are you still with me, everyone? Do you fussy cut your designer series paper? Honestly, I usually don't, but this is so beautiful. I, I saw an idea on Pinterest and I thought I wanted to try making something my own similar. So hopefully this gives you another idea of what to do other than just cutting that DSP into squares and circles and all sorts of things like that. <clears throat> okay. I like that. So this is gonna come in from the side. Are you seeing how this is coming together so far? And I'm going to need a tag for the sentiment. So somewhere around here, I don't know where it went. I had a, here we go, a strip of flirty flamingo. I thought I would just tuck in here. I don't know, what do we think? How do we like this? Yeah? Okay. Let's stamp our sentiment. What do you, so here it is. I thought maybe you saw what I did with my, piercing mat. Okay, I'm gonna use my thank you so much again, cause it's so versatile and I always need thank you cards, honestly. I'm just gonna stamp this and then we'll line it up how we want it. Okay. So that's gonna go there. This I think I'll tuck. Ooh, I can tuck it right all the way to the end. Perfect. And I'm just gonna cut this at an angle like that. So figure out where I want this. Line this up here. I think this will go great right here. Okay, so I'm gonna lay my finger here. This is a really, really super technical way to do this. I'm laying my finger here. I'm gonna line this up. This is where I'm putting my sentiment. <laughs> You know, this is actually gorgeous, this is the way it is. All right, now comes the magic. Dimensionals. All right, I'm going to use these edge pieces because Jody scolded me earlier. And place these around here. <laughs> I don't know if Jody's still watching. Um, all right. And actually, these edge pieces are going to be just perfect for what I need to do. I'll layer it here. This one's a little long, so let me smooth that. And I will tuck this. This the key to this, to be honest with you, is um, a lot of dimensionals because you want a nice firm layer that isn't sagging, that's raised up nice and even above that card base. So you're probably thinking I'm going way overboard with these dimensionals, and I might be a little bit, but I really want a very firm layer. <laughs> Jody's laughing. 
I know. She scolded me, so I got to use them. <laughs> All right. Can you believe we got through four cards in like about an hour? Because I usually yap your ear off for the first 15 minutes and we're almost done. I didn't cut an inside piece for this card because honestly, I wasn't thinking, but you're definitely going to need one for the black card. And I've given you lots of ideas for inside layers tonight. So I think you'll survive if I don't show you an inside layer. But I'm lining up the edge. with the edge, like so. See how that's up over the top? Do you love that? Now I think we need a little ribbon on here and I feel like this natural twine I don't know, do I want the natural twine or do I want the white? Hmm, I think I'm gonna do this twine. This feels a bit softer to me. So, <clears throat> I don't have, see, I don't have my color palette perfected here for this card. Thank you, Sharon. Sharon says she loves this card. Yes, the angled cut definitely helps. Patty, I agree with you. All right, I'm going to tie this in a knot so that I don't need to call John to come up here and hold his finger down because he's not going to do it anyway. <laughs> I'll tie this in a bow. I made this uh I made this linen thread plenty plenty long. I weigh so much of this stuff. I feel really guilty about it. Ooh, the pink would have worked too. I don't know. What do we think? Should we do the pink instead? Let's just tie it on there. Should we see how the pink looks? That might look better. You ever do this? Nope, don't like it. Gonna try something else. Let's do our pink twine like Jody suggested. I've got some tape on here that is now stuck to my finger. Okay. Ooh, Jody, I think you hit the jackpot here with the pink. I forgot about the pink for a minute. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. We're coming in with our pink twine. Just see how those little tiny adjustments make all the difference in a card. And believe it or not, sometimes that's what has me spending hours in my craft room are those little tiny adjustments. So I make a card and then I think, oh, but would that be better in this other color? And so I try it in the other color, the same design and come up with all sorts of fun ideas. Here we have our pink, which I like better than our natural. Here we are. What do you think? Do you love it? Oh my gosh. And you totally could. Someone said that they use Stella all the time. So why not? Should we Stella our flowers? 
I'll just do the flower petals here. I won't do like all the leaves, but I'm just doing a little bit on our flower petals to get a little sparkle. See how that looks. Pretty darn good if I do say so myself. <clears throat> see if you can, if I can get you to see. It's really hard to see the Stella. But that's a pretty darn sharp, stunning card, right? With that black. Kay says, like all the cards, thank you for sharing. You are so welcome. Thank you for the compliment. I so appreciate it. Now, of course, being a black card, you're going to want to do something on the inside. I'm going to save you guys another 10 minutes here. So let's take a look and recap our card projects for the night. Thank you, Kelly. I so appreciate that. <clears throat> Melanie says, wink it up. Darn right, you got to wink it up. Stella needs to see, be in the spotlight, right? All right, we've got a lot of cards here tonight. Here was my, um, actually with this card, here was my sample that I was playing around with. So some things I wanted to change is I wanted to make sure that that twine went all the way to the bottom. It felt a little lopsided to me. But yeah, that is on um, Sahara Sand. So you can see the difference. Oh, you can see the cella a little bit here at an angle. Isn't that beautiful? So we made those cards. Remember our first card tonight? Our really simple card that got us all warmed up. And then we made our hummingbird card. And here's the sample I made. So got our hummingbird card. I made a lot of uh, short cards today. And then we got all of our beautiful, simple stamping thank you cards. All of this tonight, can you believe it? Holy cow, you guys. That's a lot of projects. <clears throat> thank you, Jody. Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Sharon. Yeah, I like it. What's your favorite? I'm so curious, everyone. Tell me what your favorite one was. While you're all throwing at me your favorites, I just want to remind you that if you need supplies, I would so, so, so love it if you would shop with me. I am so thrilled when I earn your business and you can shop my online store at countrycardsbyrose.blogspot.com. There is that um, shop my online store link there and my host code for January here is 9HDAFEJT. Um, so when you use that host code, that's how I'm able to buy the supplies um, what to give away uh, prizes to you guys. If your order is under 150, use that code. If it's over 150, we should chat because I want to make sure you get 20% off. Um, but if you're not interested in being a discount shopper, if it's over 150, place your own order. Don't use that host code. I will still see that you've shopped with me and send you the special thank you that I send to everyone who uses my host code. So, there you have it, our four projects and some similar ones for the night. Ooh, everyone says they love them all. Jody loves the first one. Carol's favorite was the black card. Kim loved the butterfly. A butterfly is pretty darn popular, I see. Simple, stunning card. And you learned a little bit about the Carner Blue tonight too. That's kind of exciting. I got to share some of my um, insect days from college with all of you guys, so. All right, turn off this light so you're not blinded. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Another quick reminder that tomorrow's the last day to sign up for my Dragonfly Garden class to go. Um, the pre-order ends tomorrow. So get that order in. I'll post the link to this in the description once I'm done. I hope you all have a super wonderful Monday evening. I'm about to go watch the most dramatic row ceremony ever on The Bachelor. Um, which is DVRing as we speak. And I will be here, same place, same time, next Monday, 7 p.m. Central Time. 
uh, probably showing you more ideas with celebration because there's all sorts of products yet that I haven't even got a chance to play with. So, all right, have a great night and a great rest of your week and I will be stamping with you soon. See you later, bye.